Welcome to the jungle Where things will never be the same You can try to hang on the outside But in time you will, will run dry I said welcome, welcome to the jungle <laughs> Where things will never be the same Get up and good morning, Freshies. I'm Arena and I'll be taking over the waves of Fresh today. I'm taking a break from the stage in the studio today, so sit back, relax, and check out what we've got in store for you today. The boys Fussy and Shim get physical today with their tips and tricks. Whoever initiates the shake, dictates the shake. Auntie Teller puts the ra in I wish I was Oprah. What do they mean by thirsty? You know, is that before Friday or? And I let you into my world because it's changed since you've seen me last. Every album represents a different stage in my life and it's different, it's just I've just grown and uh, you know, I've just gone from a girl to a woman. <laughs> so. Right now though, we got the ladies of Manawahine keeping it fresh at their latest show in Okilani. a story inspired by artistic director Tai Royal, a story that was told to him from Te Arawa, um, the story about Te Ao Kapurangi and how she basically saved her people from annihilation. We basically had a jam, so we got in the studio, um, everyone sort of used the essence of what the story was about and just moved that through the body and um, this is what we've created. This is why I love New Zealand dancing, is because it has mana. That's the reason, there's a sense of family, there's a sense of togetherness, and mana wahine is incorporating um, so many different people's stories, and, it, and we're bringing it to life. I've kind of learnt my uh, Māori tanga um, through dance. Like I was, I grew up in Tamaki, so kind of away from my tribal affiliations, and I've learnt um, a lot about my culture through contemporary dance. So um, it's been an amazing experience. I always like to think of different people throughout the show. I often think of my mother but also these beautiful dancers that I get to dance with every day and get inspiration from them. It's quite rare in the dance industry in New Zealand to have um, a cast of women of five. We're all at a very experienced level in the contemporary world. Um, it's really, um, I don't know, it makes a difference. <laughs> like it just, you, you, can, you can feel that and um, I think that's something to acknowledge. were some really powerful moments. I enjoyed it thoroughly and the girls were amazing. Uh, the music was fantastic. The projections were, it was really beautiful, beautiful experience. Gave me goosebumps. I was crying continuously, tearing up every single time. It's a big story, but what we do in the show is that we take the essence of not only that story, but um, also what mana wahine is to us. Hold on to me, don't let me go, 
Manawahine, that's who run the world. Girls, don't get too far, because we got more freshness on the way. Bailangi Shake actually originates way back in ancient times when everyone used to carry around swords and daggers. See, Bailangis weren't very trusting of each other back in the day. Avocado! Avocado! Uh, hello? Yeah, bro. Yeah? Wanna cruise down to mine? Oh, uh, you know what? I'd love to drive down, but I don't have a gado. Oh, hey, poor thing. You want a hug? Oh, I'd love to have a gado. Okay. Welcome back. I'm Aradna serving you up some fresh this morning. Now, the last time I was on fresh, I was in Savai'i seeing my fans. But I've come a long way as an artist, so come check out my world now. What's a brown girl like? I'm more than the color of my skin. I'm a girl that likes the same. That song is about racism. I started writing that song in 2013 after an incident, the Vodafone Music Awards. Um, my friend was sitting out uh, supporting alongside my brothers and sisters. Uh, there was a guy in the audience, like, close to them. Every time I went up to win an award, he'd say racist, like, you know, comments and stuff. And my friend told me afterwards, and, you know, I was really happy just winning all the awards and stuff. But um, soon after she told me that, what happened, it kind of killed my buzz. And it was important to win these awards, but at the end of the day, like, that didn't really matter because, you know, someone could say something like that about my race ruined the moment for me and that's that's when I started writing Brown Girl. And Brown Girl, I'm just saying, you know, I'm not just the colour of my skin, you know, there's more to me, there's like layers of me. I'm not just the brown girl in the rain. It feels great. It feels awesome that other people feel strength in the song and that this is something that they can, you know, play and feel empowered by. Yeah, that's how I feel. Um, done by Andy Tawafiafi at Tao Pao Te Tao. And I always go to him, he, he did my hands a couple years back. I just wanted to get something that represents my culture and, you know, this is just me just showing off my, you know, my blood. I'm Samoan Indian and this is what runs in my blood and that's what it represents. Every album represents a different stage in my life and it's different, it's just I've just grown and I, you know, I've just gone from a girl to a woman. <laughs> so that's how I feel, that's how I look at it. The jungle, where things will this album is just uh, a collection of everything that I've experienced since then, since 2012. That's a long ass time. So the album's mainly about love, life, and heartbreak. I started working with Jeff from Truth and Soul. That's based out in New York. They sometimes call him Jeff Dynamite. He worked with a lot of people that I admire 
Adele and Ello Black and just a whole bunch of people that, you know, their, their music I connect to and I felt like it was the right fit to do an album, a whole album with them. I got to work on the album organically, like we have musicians together and just jam in a room. That's the way I like to do things, just have a jam and see what fits and we got to do that. So I did um, in Auckland, Nick of the Woods. Time has come, everybody. Can you please give it up? Make your warmest welcome for Aradna. Give it up, give it up, everybody. I say welcome, welcome to the jungle where things will never be the same. You can try to hang on the outside. It was just an awesome vibe, positive, everyone was happy and it was packed like sardines. <laughs> but I love that kind of vibe, like, you know, it's kind of more intimate, like, because you're, like, very close. <laughs> but that was probably one of my favourites so far. Three freshest things. I always mumble and I fall about all the time, especially in interviews, like, We've probably done this so many times. <laughs> Take again, again. I love to wear Ear Love Lovers every day, all day. That's all I wear. <laughs> uh, I even use my sari as an Ear Love Lover right now. <laughs> Wrap it around. Like, <laughs> yeah. There's more than three fobby things about me, but yeah, we'll stick to that. I'm close to my family, so it's always hard to be away from them. And, you know, always hard to have someone to talk to when you're going through something. Uh, you know, being on the phone, that's like not enough sometimes. And that's why I came back. And plus, I, home is home. It just keeps me grounded and reminds me why I started in the first place. Yes, it's forever, it's forever. Sometimes you need them friends that... Oh, need them friends. <laughs> you need them friends, man. Take two. Sometimes you have those friends that you know you can turn to when you need help. That's why I got my friends Fussy and Shimpao to hook you up with some helpful tips. Check them out. Have you ever gone to say what's up to your palangi, mate? But neither of you are sure which shake that you're doing? Bruh. First impressions are important. And here's the rule. There are two types of handshakes. The Bailangi shake and the bro shake. The Bailangi shake actually originates way back in ancient times when everyone used to carry around swords and daggers. See, Bailangis weren't very trusting of each other back in the day. You met someone, grab their arm, and then you shake them just in case they were Assassin's Creed. Bailangi is savvy, man. Savvy. Whoever initiates the shake dictates the shake. Extend the arm, it's parallel. Pause, engage. Grip it like you did something bad and your girlfriend's walking away and you're trying to hold on. Do it okay, baby? Grip it like your dad grips the full spot. It's important that it's in parallel, okay? Because any higher, you're entering bro shake territory. Any lower, use a level if you need to. Protractor, probably the only time you ever use that protractor. What is that angle? Obtuse, right angle. Acute. 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 Imagine that this is a dance, and your hands... You want to be dancing? Nobody here. It's just you and me. It's where I want to be. Now the bro shake. When you're coming for the bro shake, if you're initiating the shake, you're what? You're dictating the shake. Dictating the shake. Ooh, really, baby. Instead of coming up to parallel, you're going to come all the way up to 45 degrees with a slight hook in your hand, like a marvelous fish hook. That should signal to your friend what you're going to do. He reciprocates. You come in, connect, draw, and love. Don't forget the love. Tell it to your friends. I hope that clears up the confusion. See you next time. High five. Peace. I don't know if that was helpful or hilarious, but one lady that's always a crack up is Auntie Tala. Here after the break. Paul, 
Marie. Oh, Marie. Here he is. I heard about what you did. And what did I do? Poor Marie. You broke her heart. Poor girl. If she's single now, you win. <laughs> I sit with a slouch. Whatever I do, I do it for myself. Salofa and good morning, Freshies. It's your girl, Aradna. And as promised, every Freshie's favorite auntie is in the house to tackle those everyday issues. Auntie Tala, take it away. Auntie Tala here, and guess what? What? It's another episode of Chow Chala Chala! And I've got an amazing panel for you today, starting off with my favorite TV presenter. Please give it up for Miriam Makamo! Yeah! Woohoo! And my all time favorite hip hop artist from Wellington, now in Auckland, please give it up for King Kapisi! My favorite actress, they insist on oh, she's so awesome. You wanna see her on every magazine and TV program. Please give it up for Che Willa. Wow, thanks guys for coming today. Yeah. Now it's time to listen to your question and my panel will try and answer it and maybe even make things worse. Let's go to our video message. Auntie Tala, my friends keep hitting me up if I don't like their photo or their status they've posted. But why are they so thirsty for likes? Mmm, wow, that was a very interesting question, eh? Tawila, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I mean, I do have a bit of uh, experience with social media. And then everyone lost their damn mother minds. And um, I can say, I think it's more of a younger generational kind of thing where they do equate their popularity on social media mm -hmm. as, you know, real life. And remember this, it's not about the likes you get on social media, it's actually about how much you like yourself. Wow. Yes. This, I think you put it all in a, in a something shell, yeah. <laughs> Very good. How about you, King Caps, you know, with all the work that you do, is it important for people to like um, your profile in there? Uh, there's, there's good and bad of social media, but um, I think if, if her friends are, are hassling her about being on, you know, and not liking her stuff, well, I'd say you want to get them, you want to throw them away, but then they say, no, no, keep them, keep them. And you, 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 you just not throw them away, sorry. Just, you know, just no longer see them anymore. Oh, OK. Yeah. Which is like throwing them away. <laughs> yeah. Wow, is that right? <laughs> How about you, Miriam? I mean, the more disconnected we become in real life, the more we seek connection in any way we can. So I think one good thing that she could do maybe is come off social media and just test themselves for a month and see whether or not you can get by without needing likes in the virtual world and actually build the likes that you have in your actual life with your friends and your whanau. Yeah, well, I, I was a bit confused because I'm an older generator. What do they mean by thirsty? You know, is that before Friday or, you know, what, what are they talking about? Yeah, well, it is the way the younger generations sort of um, basically just express wanting. So if you're, you know, if you're hungry for something, if you're thirsty for something, you're going to go and get that. Everyone's thirsty. I don't know why. Look, there's some water here. If you're thirsty, <laughs> you can quench your thirst. Wow. Yeah. I'm more of a hungry type of girl. <laughs> Well, I guess now it's time, you know, where you can directly talk to Katrina and just tell her some advice to help with your friend in terms of being thirsty. Well, Katrina, yeah, it's like I said before, you know, no amount of likes is going to quench that thirst. Only water can do that. It's about liking yourself and your friend won't be asking you to like her status if your friend learns to like herself too. How about you, King Gabs? Uh, Tala for Katrina. Uh, personally, myself, your friends that are trying to check you, uh, you know, if you're not liking their stuff, get yeah, them, which means throw them away. Get out of here. Get out of here, man. And get some new friends. Thanks, King Gabs. You love to throw things away. <laughs> How about you, Miriam? What would you like to say to Katrina? So, Katrina, clearly your friend is, as Tawila says, is looking for validation, and it's not your job to do that via social media. So figure out just how important that friendship is to you and how much you want to help her love herself more. 
wow, that was great. So I just want to say to you, Katrina, you know, maybe your friend is just thirsty for, for your friendship, you know, and, and give her something that's real, not all these brisk the padding on computer things. Tell her just to eat hips, eat hips and stay in your room, grow a beard. So <laughs> hope to see you next week. Give it up for our panel. Thank you very much. Bye. Help them see they ain't no different from me. Living in LA was an awesome time for me, and we love seeing other freshies in different parts of the world. So here's our Polly postcard for today. Hey, you're Massa for all of all here too. What's up, freshies? Wahaku Noko Glee Jackson. Welcome to my Polly postcard. And where am I? New Way! Firstly, thanks to God for such a beautiful country, a beautiful day, and a beautiful me. Hi. Jim! This is Utuko, the first place I swam at when I came in 1992. Nothing's changed, and I'm so glad it's still the same. Woo! Rolahi, alafi! This is Limu, another popular swimming place. A lot of school trips happened there. Bruh, mean memories. Oh, and I'm Kulu. Welcome to Matapa. Back in the day, only the kings were allowed to bathe here. So we hold it very sacred to us. Because the water here is 50 50 salt water and fresh water. Perfect way to end a nice hot day anyway. Go and hit the bucket. Hey, so that's just a few of our favorite swimming spots here in Newey. Fgawulahi for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed my poly postcard. Fgawulahi, my fresh. Remember, stay cool, stay real, stay fresh. Keep it fresh, freshies. Every ghetto, every city, and suburban place I've been. Today we put the red in the red and I'm feeling fresh to the fullest and I hope you are too. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Let's take a peep at next week's show.